My name is Jake, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about health insurance. And so if you're new to my channel, I am in my mid thirties. My wife and I were looking to achieve financial independence and retire early, so we follow the fire movement here in our mid forties. We live down here in Austin, Texas, and we're looking to grow and amass a portfolio of $2 million so that we can live 100% off our dividend income. We also invest into real estate, but we're, we're not 100% sure if we're going to do that long term. We want to have the flexibility that if we want, you know, tomorrow we can pack up and we can move to Costa Rica. We can move to Portugal. We can move to Panama. We can move up into the mountains. Like the big thing for us is flexibility. And in today's video, I want to talk about healthcare and how that plays a role in our planning for our financial independence journey, because there's a lot of unknowns. And in this video, I'm not going to touch on every nuance, every single thing that could potentially apply to every different group of people uh, watching the video, but really just high level, you know, talk on about three things. The first thing is, is I'm going to talk about if you were to retire early here in the United States. And so early is pre 65. So anything earlier than 65 years old, where you would need marketplace insurance. Okay, and I'm gonna walk everybody through, like actually go through and do kind of like a, a tutorial of what that would look like and walk walk through our, our scenario and a few few different options and things that we're looking for. So that's, that's gonna be the very first part of the video. The second part is I'm gonna talk about, you know, if you're gonna consider retiring internationally, some things to consider. I'm not gonna go into actual like dollar amounts. Okay, this is how much it's gonna cost in each individual country and really outline every different scenario because there's so many of them. This should be a starting point if you're looking international to continue your research. But when it comes to the United States, I'm absolutely gonna go into detail. All right, and then the last thing here in the video is I'm gonna do kind of a, a summary, a wrap up of you know my thoughts on retiring early, how health insurance plays a role into that, and what my wife and I, what we're considering when looking to retire early. So you might be asking yourself, well, Jake, why are you as a dividend growth investor Investing channel here on YouTube talking about health insurance. You know, why aren't you telling me which stocks to buy here in September? What are the best dividend stocks to buy, right? Well, my channel is about dividend investing. It's about inspiring and educating new investors about dividend investing, but also really the bigger picture. The bigger picture is I invest into a dividend growth strategy so that I can retire early. And health insurance is an integral part of that, right? And so you might be watching my channel the first time and thinking, well, you know, I clicked on this video thinking I was gonna learn about dividends. Yeah, we talk about dividend investing, but you know, life is full of surprises. You never know what you're gonna get, right? Not everything turns out as we expected. For example, Now I bet you thought there was going to be a raging bull roaring out of there, but instead you got a kid with a diaper. You know, you could say life is kind of like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Here in the United States, when you're employed, your employer covers a large portion of your health insurance costs. When you're no longer employed, you're responsible for funding your health care insurance costs and 100% of them. Assuming that you don't qualify for an exemption or a disability, you are responsible for paying everything. This is, you know, Leaving all political topics aside, whether you are the left or you're the right, you're in the middle somewhere or up in outer space, right? That doesn't matter to me. Um, when it comes to the political views of this, I'm just merely sharing what is available today. And what's available today has not always been possible. And so I want to be very clear that, you know, this video here created in, in 2020 may be obsolete in, in a year, in two years, but looking at it, and that's what makes it so challenging planning for your future, but what's available today, that's what we're gonna be talking about. So we're gonna be talking about the affordable healthcare options that you have, also known as Obamacare. When it comes to your political views, I, I honestly couldn't give two shits. Like I'm not left, I'm not right, like I'm not taking any political view on this. This is just merely looking at it from what is available today. So if you're looking to retire early, and you're in the early stages of that. Say, for example, I'll just use me as an example. I'm in my mid-30s. My wife and I, we have about eight, eight to ten more years. It really depends on a few factors. And then really the, uh, the all honest truth here is you just don't know. You don't know if you're going to be hit with a hardship. You don't know what's going to happen in the market. Like 
it, it's very difficult to forecast and predict, but really you just have to take your best guess. And so some of the questions that, that we tend to ask ourselves when looking at health insurance and early retirement are, what will happen if an unforeseen health issue ha occurs here in early retirement? Right? Are we gonna, you know, say for example, we have a heart condition or we have an accident, an auto accident, are we gonna go bankrupt? Right? Like what is what is our out of pocket max? Like those are some of the questions that we ask ask ourselves and we definitely wanna cushion ourselves. Like the big thing for us is we don't wanna retire and then live in anxiety and live in fear, right? Like if we got hit by a car tomorrow, would we have to go back to work? Right? Like so when we do our planning, we do our planning with the worst case scenario in terms of the cost. Right. And so the next question is, well, I have to go to back to work, you know, if, if I do have a life altering emergency. So all these questions that we're asking ourselves and I would encourage you to ask as well when, when you're going down this path of, you know, considering, all right, should I retire early? Am I able to do that? What are some of the unknowns? And, you know, another question is, is what is the quality of the healthcare available to me, right? Like if, if you retire in the United States, what, what options will I have there? If you, for example, retire in Panama, right? Like you know, say, for example, you live in Panama City compared to living in the outskirts, like what, what opportunity, what options are going to be available to you? And then uh, another question here is, you know, what healthcare options are going to be available to the average person in the United States? And, you know, what is that future going to look like, right? If we have a different political landscape here in the U.S. in the coming years or in 10 years, like how is that going to impact me, right? And another question could be is, you know, what options do I have if the costs go up, right? Like how how is that all going to impact my ability to retire early? And it's going to determine if I retire in lean fire, right? Where it's, you know, I'm, I'm pinch and pennies or a fat fire where I'm drinking martinis on the beach figuratively, right? So those, those are all things to, to consider when, when looking at this. Before we dive in and I walk everybody through the actual process of the uh, looking at the different plans and the costs that are associated with that, it's important to understand how the prices are, are set up. So here in the United States, everything when it comes to the subsidies, the amount that you get from the United States or from the government is based off of your income. And this is really, really important. It's not based off of your assets. So you could have a $2 million portfolio, but it's based off of the income and dividends in, in my example are considered income and that's how it's determined in terms of the costs that I'm going to pay. Okay, so what, what does that mean? Like for, for the average person here, if you make, a, the more you make, the more you're gonna have to pay, right? Like that's, that's how it's set up in terms of the, uh, the premiums, okay? And so here when we're looking at the affordable healthcare options, it's, it's based off of the poverty level. Okay, so if you make, if you're a family of, of two, three, four, and I'm gonna show the charts in a second, that's all gonna determine how much you're paying each month in premiums for your health insurance here in the United States. All right, for example, when we look at the poverty levels here in the United States, for a family of four here in 2020, the poverty level is $26,200. So if you're making around the poverty level, that's where you're gonna get the most amount of subsidies from the government and that's going to reduce your monthly premiums. However, if you're making more, if you're making over 400% of the poverty level, that's where you're gonna actually make zero or get zero subsidies from the government. And I'm gonna show you that here in a second, but it's it's all based off of the poverty level. And this is not based by state. So it doesn't matter if you live in California, New York, you know, Mississippi, Texas, wherever, this is the federal rate. So it really doesn't matter where you live. And I think it's worth noting that the poverty level, that threshold is changing year over year. We talk about inflation a lot on this channel, and that is a big part of that every single year the poverty level goes up right so those subsidies that that 400 percent is going to fluctuate year over year so for example if we look back in 2010 for a family of four if i can pull my cursor over here so you can see it 
um, it would be $22,315 compared to last year of just over $26,000. So that's changing every single year. So for example, if you're investing in a dividend growth strategy, you're going to be making more money every year. This is going to help a little bit with that where the poverty level is going up every year, you're making more money every year. So something to take into, into account. So now that we know what the subsidies and, and the, uh, the requirements are to get subsidies from the government in terms of your, your premiums that you're paying every single month, let's take a look at a, at a few examples here. So let's take a look at if we were to retire in, let's say, sunny West Palm Beach, Florida. And let's type in a zip code for sunny beach, you know, sunny West Palm Beach, Florida, 33407. Palm Beach County, Florida. All right, and let's click continue. All right, so here I'm gonna walk everybody through what that process looks like. So if you wanna follow along um, while watching the video, um, you can pause the video as I, as I go. This isn't something that I really scripted that I plan on, you know, commenting on every single step, but I'll just walk everybody through, you know, some of the basics of what you need to look for. And this is really most applicable, like the audience that I'm speaking to here is your, your 20 year olds, your 30 year olds, your 40 year olds, though, or maybe your 50 year olds, right? Everyone that's looking to retire early and we maybe not necessarily know exactly what our costs are going to be, our income, etc. Maybe you're 20 years old, you don't have a family yet and you're kind of thinking, okay, well, what would it cost if I had one kid versus four kids? So this is going to be something that you can play around with um, yourself. This is where we're at. Let's take a look at it. Preview of 2020 plans and prices, right? All right. So let's go ahead and let's click start. It's going to ask you for your, your plan ID. You can skip this. You can ask who is in your household. You can say you and other people. Click continue. Say, for example, your, whether it's realistic for you with your current family or if you're projecting, right? Like you're saying, okay, well, in 10 years, I'm going to have you know, a wife or a husband or who, whatever, and five kids, right? You can, you can do the, the fun planning there. Are you married? You can do yes, no, or skip. All right. And so we're going to click continue here. Um, and let's say, for example, we're going to have two dependents, right? We have uh, two kids, hypothetically. We click continue and let's say, tell us about us. Um, I am at this stage going to be, let's say I'm 42-ish. I don't know. That's 42. I'm 34 right now. So maybe wishful thinking, maybe 43, but let's check it out. Continue. Tell us about your spouse. She is most definitely not five. She is same age as me. So let's say 42 female. None of these apply. Hit continue. Tell us about your dependent. So we don't have any kids right now. So we're thinking in the next eight to 10 years, let's say our kid is seven years old. Let's say eight years old. Who knows? Let's say that it's a, a male and let's hit continue. Let's say the other one is, I don't know, let's say it's six years old and, and a female. None of these apply. Let's hit continue. All right, so here we can confirm in our household number members, right? Like we, we don't know for sure if this is gonna be the case. That's why we're, we're forecasting, we're kind of looking in the future. It can get a little, have a little bit of fun with this, right? We don't know if we're gonna have two kids, one kids, five kids, most definitely not five kids, but I think uh, it's a good direction to kind of start thinking. And then we're gonna hit confirm. And now this is the fun part, right? So if you watch my previous video about our goals to generate a $2 million portfolio that is bringing in around $75,000 in dividend cash flow year every, every single year. And that's obviously growing as the portfolio grows, as the uh, companies I'm investing in are growing their dividend. But let's say we have $75,000 in annual dividends. And we'll, we could go and we can adjust this and I'll show you that here in a second. So we hit continue. So we got, okay, our estimated savings. We're gonna save around eight hundred and forty seven dollars every single month in premiums okay so we're saving money so um, remember what we talked about with the subsidies and with the poverty rate it's within that 400 percent range so we get subsidies from the uh, from the government under the uh, under the current laws that that are you know in place right now so l let's take a look and view our plans so the plans here i'm not going to go into too too much detail but what i do want to focus on is i want to focus on when it comes to categories and your plans so you got your bronze so really high level bronze silver and gold this is pretty much the coverage that you're going to get 
Um, with each of these plans, bronze means you don't go to the hospital very often. You don't need a lot of coverage. Uh, silver is, you know, silver is kind of your, your average. You go to the hospital every so often, you get checkups, you, you have, you're, you're living a normal life. Gold is you're, you're a little bit more, you see yourself more at the hospital more often. You have a underlying health condition or you, you just, you, you want that peace of mind. You want the best coverage possible. All right, though that's what that really means here. Okay, let's take a look at silver and let's apply the filters and see what is available to us. Okay, and so when it comes to the different plans, this is where I would encourage you to um, to do some additional research in terms of what does EPO mean, what does PPO mean, what does HMO mean. If you're in your 20s, you're probably under your parents and you're covered by your your parents insurance. But these are all things that it's important that you understand what they are and what, what it means. Um, but I would encourage you to, to go and do, do some, some research on that after watching this video. Okay, so when it comes to this plan, some important things to look at. So what are we looking at? Right here, we're looking at the monthly payment. This is the premium, okay? And so this is including the tax credit based off of our income. So if we had more income, we would have less subsidies, right? If we didn't have any, it would cost us $1,426 a month just in the premium. That's not the coverage, like to go to the hospital. Like that's the ability to be covered under this plan is like the right to pay more, <laughs> right? So you go to the hospital, you have to pay the premium regardless. And then we'll get to the, the other parts in a second, right? So looking at just the premiums, like that's what we're talking about here with this, this tax credit. Okay. And I'm going to play around with that here in just a second, but let's, let's explain these other, other parts here. So your deductible is most plans or a lot of plans that you're going to see on here. You're going to see the deductible and the out of pocket max. And these are also based off if you're, you're on a family plan, for example, like, you know, family plan, like a phone plan, <laughs> a little bit different, but your out of pocket max is the 100% maximum amount that you're going to pay for coverage. Let's say, for example, you have a year where you break your leg, your kid, you know, goes and breaks their arm and who knows what. You have to go to the hospital 10 times because you get, you know, that Chinese food or that, you know, that pizza that you ate or whatever food, doesn't matter what food, um, made you sick and you have to go in and out of the hospital, right? Whatever. The maximum that you're going to pay is one uh, 16,300 with this specific plan. And there's different plans, right? Um, different coverages, different providers, different things that come with these different plans. Let's, let's for simplicity's sake, let's stick with this one for now. This is the maximum that you're going to pay. Now, for example, if you're a family of four, let's say your, your, your wife or you were the only one that had to go to the hospital and you were the one that was sick, it's actually going to be much less. So your out of pocket max for the individual is, is about, is half of this, right? So this is the maximum if your entire family, like two of the, two of you, um, have to go to the hospital, right? So it, it's very different if it's just one individual. So very, very important. Um, the deductible really in layman's terms here, this is, this is what you have to pay out of pocket. The 9,400 you have to pay typically, let's say for example, hypothetically, you, you broke your arm, you broke your leg and you had to go to the hospital and you had, um, $15,000 in, in costs. You would have to pay a hundred percent up to the duct the deductible. So 9,400, you would be responsible for that. And then depending on your plan, you'd have to read the, the plan details right? Um, then it would be split between the insurance company and you from 9,400 up to 16,300, right? So that spread right there, it would be split. Okay. But your maximum out of pocket as a family is 16,300. And so when my wife and I are planning for our financial independence, we're planning, we're budgeting a yearly budget for the out of pocket max. Once again, one of the questions that we had was, well, I don't want to have to have an emergency and then always go to bed at night feeling like, okay, well, shit, if we break our leg, I, I, I hope karma is not a thing because I'm talking a lot about breaking things. I don't want to break things. I don't want to get in a car accident. Um, and so if we do have those unforeseen you know, accidents, this is, this is the, our sleep well at night number is that out of pocket max 
plus let's pull out our fancy dancy little calculator here five thousand nine hundred times 12 so 6,946 plus 16,300. This is our out-of-pocket max for this plan, $23,000. That is insane. You look at other countries, you look at other, like somebody in, in Canada or somebody in South America or, any, or somebody in, in Europe might be looking at this and watching this video and be like, holy cow, Americans are crazy, right? Well, yeah, we kind of are when it comes to, to our health insurance. It's, it's in, insane, okay? Now, this is the worst case scenario. Now, what I'm describing is worst case scenario. When it comes to like the individual, let's say, for example, you never have to go to the hospital once and you don't have any issues or very few issues, you're only paying your premium, okay? So that's what we're talking about. Those are the things that you have to factor in when you're looking at retiring early. Now, let's go back to some of the numbers here, the nerdy part part of this. Let's edit this up and let's let's play a little bit around with this. So we're talking about $75,000. Let's say you made, let's say you made $57,000 under this plan. $57,000, you're going to get a higher credit. So you're going to get a credit of just under $1,100. Okay. And so let's filter the plans here. Da, 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 da. All right, so that same plan that was going to cost over, what, $500 a month is now only going to cost you $329 and, and your deductible goes down and your out-of-pocket max goes down, okay? So you might be thinking to yourself, okay, well, wow, that's a, actually a big difference. Let's take a look at it. So this was at before. Let's uh, pull this over here. So... When we made $75,000 over here, let's take 329 times 12 plus 13,000. Our out-of-pocket max here for $57,000 is quite a bit less. It's over $6,000 less. So you might be thinking to yourself, okay, well, you know, if we want to kind of over-engineer this with the numbers, maybe if we made less money, we could then thereby reduce our healthcare costs. It's actually a very viable strategy, okay? And so this is something that you might want to consider. Um, and this is the like the, the numbers part. This is where it kind of gets fun and interesting to me where I'm like, okay, well, how can I kind of hack this to work work out in my favor? Like that's where, where the numbers part really where it excites me, where when, my, when I talk about this with my wife, she just looks at me and just like tries to not fall asleep while I'm talking to her. Um, but for all of you out there that are excited and interested in this like me, um, it's kind of cool, right? So you can see really like, okay, well, how, how this can work out if you kind of tweak the numbers a little bit, okay? Let's look at another example. Let's say, for example, you made $104,000. $104,000, you would get zero, and I mean zero, subsidies here in the United States. For that same plan, if your dividend portfolio was generating you $100, $104 a year in income, you're paying $1,426 every month. Now let's pull up our calculators here again. Oops, let's see if we can do that. Oh, I already deleted that one, it's okay. Um, the other one was like, what, $16,000? Let's see this one. 1426 times 12 plus 1600. Yeah, so $10,000 more. So to have the same purchasing power, if you made $104,000, it's effectively as if you made $94,000. You see what that means, what that does there? So what it means is if you're striving for early retirement and you want to go on, you want to purchase a marketplace insurance plan here in the United States, you could actually retire on $94,000 instead of $104,000. That could mean you could retire a year earlier, two years earlier, right? That's what I mean. It's exciting. And when I was explaining this to my wife, I said, what that means is we can retire early. Then she woke up from her quick nap while I was talking to her, and then she was interested. <laughs> and so that's that's how this, this can be so cool is... 
you can make it, you can engineer it in your favor and make it work out. I'll leave a link to the uh, the previous page that we were just at with um, the healthcare.gov. It's a little bit tricky on their website to find the, uh, the plans. So I'll leave a link to how you can get there um, and just go directly to the plans and the pricing, as well as I'm gonna leave a link to this website as well. It's the exact same thing, except it's from Cigna. It's a healthcare provider here in the United States, and they. Uh, and if you're here in the U.S. and you type in the same zip code, you'll get the exact same coverage options. But the thing that I like about the Cigna website is it breaks it down also by individual. So if you're looking at the, uh, here, let's go back here. You're looking at the deductible and the out of pocket. This is for the family. But if you want to see the individual, say, for example, the uh, the scenario that I was talking about, say the husband or the wife, one of them is very healthy, does not have to go to the doctor at all, but the other, the spouse does, um, you're only going to be paying the individual deductible and the individual out-of-pocket max for that individual. And I think the, the Cigna website displays that a little bit better um, in terms of, of that. So I'll, I'll leave a link to that. It's the exact same thing. Um, you can go through and you can you can check that out and you can see the uh, the actual plans. I'd recommend not giving your, your email and your phone number because you might be getting some, uh, some phone calls, some spam calls and emails. So I would recommend just putting your zip code. So now that we saw some of the options that we have here in the United States, the costs associated with that, how your income plays a big role in the overall costs that you're gonna pay for your healthcare coverage here in the United States, let's take a look at some of the different options here internationally. There's a lot of different blogs and websites when it comes to the you know, the best places to retire, the best healthcare in the world. Um, here's a website that I thought was was pretty interesting. Um, it's not like from any government or anything. It's, it's from internationalliving.com, the world's best places to retire in 2020. And they break it down by through an index of different criteria, you know, from getting a visa to the lifestyle within the different countries. And I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom here where it has the actual index laid out. If my mouse will work with me here, let's see if I can scroll down. Scroll all the way down here and we get to the index part. And, it, and it's filtered here by the final score. So once again, it's, it's the criteria are the visa, you know, how easy is it to get a visa? What is the climate, right? What is the healthcare? What is the cost of living? You can go into the different categories here, the lifestyle, the financial part, how expensive is it to live there, the housing costs, etc. And so based off of this website, uh, based off of the criteria here, Portugal is a really, really advantageous place to retire early. And they have really, really good health care. And the next here on the list is Panama and Costa Rica. And so I'm looking at this chart here and I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, I mean, there's some countries that I could even consider. Now, this is, you know, what I talked about at the beginning of the video was what my wife and I, what we really value is the flexibility, the flexibility like where, you know what? Okay, well, we don't want to spend an extra $1,000 a month or $1,500 a month in premiums in healthcare premiums, let's go ahead and let's let's do a year abroad and the money that we would save in the healthcare will pay for our entire living expenses in a country like Panama, Portugal, Costa Rica, for example. When it comes to retiring internationally, I think it's important to understand a few things. There, just like it is here in the United States where you have government backed health insurance, you have private health insurance. It's it's the same way in, in different countries where you have domestic health insurance and you have private health insurance. You can also get international health insurance from here in the United States. For example, Cigna, we talked about that. We talked about marketplace insurance. You can also get health insurance from Cigna and What's cool about this is you can go through and you can click on get a quote today. I promise it's not an affiliate link. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description below. You can go here and you can fill out your information. I would I filled this out a couple of days ago and now I'm getting random calls and, and spam emails. So maybe use an email and phone number that you don't use a lot. I, I don't know, just a, a tip. But you do have to fill out your information here. You can also fill out if you have a dependent, spouse, kids, etc. And what it does is it takes you through the exact same process that we kind of just looked at, where you're looking at marketplace insurance and based off of your income, based off of, you know, also ask, okay, well, what what is your nationality and where will you be living? And the costs here for, for private marketplace insurance here is it's really going to depend on 
on what kind of insurance you're looking for. So for example, if you're living in Panama, you, can, you have different options. You can get domestic um, insurance in Panama, or you can get international uh, insurance through Cigna here, for example, and you can get insurance for in Panama, private insurance, as well as you'll have the option to get coverage in the United States as well. So you're covered in both countries. Now, be aware that if you want that flexibility, you're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for the flexibility to have insurance in the United States as well as in Panama, but it's kind of cool if you're retired early, you want the flexibility, you want to go back and forth between the different countries, right? And, you know, let's assume that we're living in a world that does not involve viruses and, you know, all that nasty stuff of 2020, it provides that opportunity for you. But once again, you get what you pay for, you have to pay a little bit more to, to, to have access to that. When it comes to international coverage, it really depends on which country you're living in and what coverage you're looking for. When I was living in Europe, I was living in Germany, the coverage in Germany was very different than that of in Spain and Portugal or in the UK, for example. In Germany, we, ha we have private insurance, we have uh, you know, state insurance, and the uh, the experience is is a little bit different, and every country offers different things. One one thing that I noticed, for example, on the state insurance when I was there, you really only you got good coverage. Like I, I always got right into a doctor whenever I needed to see a doctor. But when it came to the options of okay, we can take care of you, but it's only covered by the like the minimum. Only the minimum was covered. If you, for example, you went to the dentist and you need to get a filling you only got the uh, the bare bones, <laughs> I guess you could say filling, the fillings that you need to replace every couple of years. If you wanted the good stuff, you'd have to pay extra, right? And so there's always those things that you have to be aware of when it comes to your health insurance. If you want quality health insurance, a lot of times you're gonna have to pay for it. And it doesn't really necessarily matter where you live, whether you're in Germany, uh, or, or in other countries, right? And so when, when looking at, like I've done a little bit of research into Costa Rica and Panama, and what I'm le learning from Panama, Portugal, these other kind of countries, like you can get really, really affordable care for just a couple hundred dollars a month. And that care covers everything. And that is very, very different. You might be thinking to yourself, we just talked about healthcare for $23,000 in the United States, right? Where in other countries, you get similar coverage for just a couple hundred dollars a month. There's no wonder that so many expats are leaving. They're leaving the United States and retiring early in these other countries. And a lot of it has to do with healthcare costs. And when it comes to healthcare, I mean, let's say a hypothetical, let's say my wife and I, we were living in, in, in Panama, right? And let's say we had to have an operation we could always get that operation in the United States if we absolutely had to. And when it comes to these other countries, if you're living in a rural area, right, healthcare, like you're, you're not gonna have a grade A hospital on every corner, right? And it's the same thing here in the United States. If you live up in Montana, you know, you're not gonna have a hospital on every corner. It's just not how it is. So it's something to really, really be aware of. And also like doctor visits and stuff like that, um, in, in these other international countries, they, they're they much more affordable. Like off, doctor visits can cost anywhere from like $10 in countries like Portugal, Panama, and Costa Rica. Um, I'm talking a lot about Panama, Portugal, and Costa Rica. It's not by chance just here on this, on this list here that we're seeing, but those are all countries that we've also considered when thinking about our, you know, retiring early for my wife and I. When we look at health insurance and early retirement, when I was first doing my own research and thinking about, okay, well, is this even a viable strategy for us? Can we even afford it? And when looking at health insurance and looking at, you know, when, when retiring early, a few takeaways that I've taken away is, you know, health insurance can be a very complicated and frustrating topic because it's ever changing, right? What was available last year or 10 years ago may necessarily not be the case today or in the future. You know, the future really is uncertain, you know, and you need to stay informed and you have to stay adaptable. And I think that's the important thing when it comes to your health insurance and adaptable in the sense of, okay, do I live here in the United States? Do I live internationally? Do I have to live, leave my, you know, leave California, leave New York uh, because of the, the cost of living and go maybe live in, in, a, in a state or an area where it's less expensive to live, where I need less income, you know, that's that's an option and being flexible. Another thing that, that's a really big takeaway for me is depending on where you live 
and the travel flexibility that you want will really determine on how much you pay, right? We talked about you can get international coverage, but if you just want coverage in Panama, for example, your, your premiums, your, your costs are going to be much lower than if you want to coverage in Panama and the United States, right? So you, you have a lot of flexibility and it really just depends on, on what, what your priorities are, what, what's important to you. And then lastly here, you can really take away from me in, in doing this research and, you know, talking about it with, with my wife is we've learned that you really can retire earlier than you think if you're able to cut your expenses. If you don't have expenses, you don't have consumer debt, you can really reduce the amount of time that you need to uh, to retire early. Like and that that for us was just an epiphany. It's like, wow. I would encourage all of you to, to look at the numbers, look at your situation, see and ask with your, your spouse, your partner, what's important to you, right? Do we have to live, do, do we have to retire in the United States? Are we flexible? Do we want to go in and, and retire abroad for a couple of years, right? What, what's important to you? And that's that's really what it, where it starts. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching the video. If you're new to the channel, I'd invite you to subscribe. If you like today's video, give me a thumbs up and I will catch everybody in the next video.